Hi everyone. Uh, today is a video I'm really excited about. Uh, so, a couple of months ago I did a video of an unboxing of uh, some ink, and they were inks from the uh, Birmingham uh, Pen Company. And uh, they, I got a range of them, so I have eight of these bottles in all now, uh, and a bunch of samples, but I'm just focusing on the bottles I have today. Uh, and I wanted to do just a sort of a, an overview of of the line. Uh, not necessarily reviewing each ink. If there are any inks here that you'd particularly like to see reviewed, uh, let me know and we'll see what we can uh, do. Or if there are other Birmingham inks you'd like to see me review, I have a couple of others on my list that I would like to uh, get my hands on uh, to do proper reviews of. Uh, but if there are any here that you like, let me know. Uh, so I have eight and uh, as I said, and th these are the, uh, I think the 30 mil bottles from memory. Uh, and I think they come in a slightly bigger, some of them come in a slightly bigger bottle, yeah, 30 mils it says there, right on the bottle, I should have just read it. Um, so what I'm actually going to do today is, well, f firstly, this is the, uh, the swabs I did when I unboxed the uh, inks, and so this gives you a decent idea as to what the colours are that sort of we have going on here. Uh, USS Requin Navy Blue, Southside Market, Boysenbury, Mount... Washington Sunset, Grand View Avenue, Midnight Horizon, John Arbuckle Coffee Green, Forbes Fe uh, Coffee Bean, Forbes Field Green, Bloomfield Red, and GC Murphy Tarnished Nickel. So, you can see here, just from these eight inks, there's a lovely range of colours. Um, there's a particular bright blue I would have loved to have got my hands on, uh, Celestial Blue, I think it's called, or something like that, or Observatory Blue, something, I don't know. Uh, that one is on my next list to do, to do as is uh, Andy Warhol Purple, which I have a sample of and love, and Fred Rogers Cardigan Red. Now, uh, at the time of filming this, they're still not released, but uh, Nick uh, at the um, Birmingham Pen Company has said that they're going to be releasing a range of uh, more vibrant colours and some shimmer inks and things like that as well, so I keep an eye out for those here on this channel. Um, I really like these inks. What I like about them is that they perform well. They look great on the page. There's some nice shading, but it's not overly shading. There's a little bit of sheen, like Midnight Horizon there, which I consider to be a very lovely blue-black, uh, does actually sheen a little bit. So it is around, it is there, uh, a little bit on the purple. But you know, if you look at things like Coffee Bean and Forbes Hill Green, they're not big sheening inks, and they actually just look great on the page. What has come up as a real favorite of mine uh, is the GC Murphy Tarnished Nickel. I think that's a very cool sort of blue, grey sort of colour. I think it's very, very interesting. Um, so, what I'm going to do today is I have inked up, hilariously, eight of these pens. So I have eight uh, Wingsong 3008s, huge ink capacity in them, um, and I've been writing with each of these for a little while and uh, getting to know the inks, and I've done a few writing samples. So I have it on um, three different sorts of paper that I've already written on, and then we'll do a final write, written sample and water test on some Rhodia. This, by the way, is Tomo River. This is the 62 gram Tomo River paper, so you get a decent sense of the colours of the ink here. I'll just do them all a little bit closer. So we've got the USS uh, Navy, uh, Requin Navy Blue, Southside Market Boysenbury, uh, Mount Washington Sunset, Grand View Avenue Midnight Horizon, John Arbuckle Coffee Bean, Forbes Field Green, Bloomfield Red, and GC Murphy Tarnished Nickel, as I showed already. So these are really cool inks. As I said, I've sampled a few others, got a few more that I'd like to get my hands on to do another one of these sorts of videos of once I get another eight. Uh, eight is a, a number that I like to have in my videos. You get a nicer sense on the page like this um, and you don't get overloaded with too many different colors. So this is the swabs. Let's get looking at the writing samples. We'll just talk about how they perform on the paper as well. So we'll start from the top uh, down and here we have this is 52 gram um, Tomo River paper. So I've written each uh, name down. These are uh, sort of a fine nib, but they've laid down a decent amount of ink. Uh, and then, so I've done little swaps and stuff and some cross hatches, and you can see also so how wet uh, the inks can be as well, and sort of a little bit of the interesting colour that comes through. But let's look at the other side and see how they perform. So 
Tomo River shouldn't bleed, shouldn't feather, and uh, well, firstly, you can see there, there's no feathering whatsoever. It is, it looks great on this page. The colors are a little perhaps dull. Um, these things are made in Germany uh, for the Birmingham Pen Company, which is a US-based company. Uh, I'm not sure who makes them, but um, a lot of inks do sort of tend to get a bit dull on Tomo River. But a couple of them do bleed through just a little bit on the, where I've laid down quite a lot of ink. Um, so, but in the, in, the, in the average writing, nothing sort of comes through, which is excellent. Moving down the line to regular co uh, copy paper, this is a reflex copy paper, which is 80 gram paper. The colors actually look really nice on this paper, better than on the Tomo River, in my opinion. Um, and they still perform relatively well. They don't sink in overly quickly. Um, and on the reverse, once again, it's really where the ink pulls, but uh, there is a little bit more bleed. So it um, it's not the best performing on this paper, but this is not fountain pen friendly paper. Then if we look at the lower end again, we get, this is um, Spirex student note paper. So this is just from a lecture pad. Um, it's sort of the lightest and sort of flimsiest paper that I have uh, in my, that I allow <laughs> in my house. Um, there's a bit of bleed, uh, feathering, sorry. Um, you can see occasionally that uh, a few of the inks do tend to, yeah, just feather ever so slightly, uh, particularly uh, Bloomfield Red gets a little bit there. And of course, down the bottom, Tarnished Nickel feathers quite uh, a lot on this paper, but this is really not fountain pen paper at all. Um, and on the reverse, there is a bit of bleed that sort of does come through quite a lot there. So. Yeah, they're relatively sort of wet inks. Uh, they're not sort of these thick, uh, sheeny, heavy, concentrated inks. They're sort of, I suppose, in a way, that, that they'd be considered sort of more traditional uh, inks in a lot of ways, and I quite like that. So, now let's move on to Rhodia. So, for this writing sample, I will speed it up as I go. Uh, just I'll just write out the same sort of thing as I did on the other paper, and uh, we'll just see how we go. As I said, these are all in... Wingsung 3008s with fine nibs. Okay, here we have the little writing sample on Rhodia. Now I've done some cross hatches down here at the bottom, which I'm now going to put a little bit of water on just while uh, we talk about the, uh, the other inks on this page. So these inks look great on Rhodia and that's pretty normal. Rhodia is the standard. Uh, it's a sort of waxier paper, uh, coated paper, so that the ink doesn't absorb deep into the paper like it does, say, on um, this sort of cheaper note paper where we get lots of sort of feathering as it seeps in. Here it sort of sits on the surface and dries. Um, and because of that, the colour stays a little bit more vibrant, the writing stays a little bit tighter, and you're allowed to see sort of what is a, a fairly decent representation of the 
uh, intended ink color. Now, a lot of people do use inks on things like the copy paper, uh, note paper, and the and the everyday sort of printer paper. And so uh, it is important to have that uh, incorporated here into uh, the review. Now, just while this water seeps in, uh, I'm going to, or does its thing, I'm just going to show you it on one other paper. So here I have it on Baron Fig uh, paper. And I just wanted to show you very quickly how uh, this paper responds to an ink like this. Now this is a more toothy absorbent paper, uh, but really fountain pen friendly. And so you can see there's no bleeding or feathering uh, at all on this. Uh, and the colors still look vibrant. Uh, so it's a really, for me, this paper, aside from being these being lovely inks, this paper you know, is, you know, stands well, well, well above a lot of others uh, and is a really, I think, quite a lovely match for this ink. Okay, let's look at this water uh, resistance now. And uh, I'll take some paper towel here and just dab it up as I go. Okay, and let's see what we're left with. And the results do vary. So this is just eight from their line. There's a lot of inks in this in this lineup. Um, so Bloomfield Red just about disappears. Southside spreads a lot. Forbes Field Green, uh, it's not so bad. It leaves a little bit of a gray blue behind. Uh, USS Requin Navy Blue, it just lightens it up. John Arbuckle Coffee Bean performs re relatively well, as does Grandview Avenue Midnight Horizon. Mount Washington Sunset, that's debatable it does leave behind something but it's not really i would say it's not probably got some of the least water resistance that and bloomfield and uh i think tarnished nickel looks really interesting um it's sort of it's at least quite a lot behind so some of these i wouldn't say they're water resistant but some if you got them wet and that water sat on there for a few minutes um a couple of minutes so you know you are you are getting a decent sort of um water resistance on some of those inks. Just a closer look at the writing there, you can see how well it performs on this paper. And then let's do the test on the back. What do we get? Well, you know, nothing's really come through, which is excellent. Like I laid down spots of sort of quite heavy ink and you could see on some of the other paper, stuff did come through, but on this Rhodia, performs pretty well. So these inks, these uh, Birmingham Pen Company inks, as I said, they're made in Germany. They are pretty high quality inks. They come in these 30 mil bottles for the most part, some come in a larger bottle, and then you can buy samples in a smaller jar, uh, which is a really great way of trying them out. They're really reasonably priced. All the ink is really reasonably priced, and often there are deals on the site when you buy a pen or you, you know, that you might get a bottle of ink or something like that. So always worth checking out. These are, for me, some of the most interesting inks to have sort of popped up in the last couple of years. They're great colors, um, they're well perform they perform well, they're interesting, and you know what? They're not from a big company. Birmingham Pen Company is not Diamine or, you know, Noodle Noodlers even, you know, which is basically a one-man operation, but these are unique inks and uh, yeah, I really get behind them. I think they're really, really interesting. As I said, I've got eight of these bottles now, and I'll be adding a few more to do another one of these videos, hopefully in a few months' time, uh, if you're interested in them. Uh, so, look, check them out. Get samples, get, uh, you know, get bottles. Just, you know, yeah, I hope this video helps show you what the Birmingham Pen Company inks uh, are actually really like, and that they are really, really good quality inks. Hope you found this video useful and interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. And please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at, at the underscore offstage underscore me, which is all linked down below. Uh, feel free to get in touch with me over there and show me what you're up to. Please get in touch. Uh, you if you've got uh, products you think I should be looking at or reviews you'd like to see, or if you've got a way you'd like to support the channel, please get in touch and let's see what we can do. In the meantime, enjoy your pens and ink, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you later.